All right, this video will probably be too long like all my other videos. So let's just get straight to the point. Today I'm going to show you what is the best carp hook in the world. Now, this is not my opinion, this is just a fact. Don't try to argue with me because you would be wrong and you would look silly. But over the last 25 years I've bought many carp hooks, mostly from Europe and Japan. Many times what you see on the table right now. But uh, a few years ago I bought a carp hook from Bass Pro Shops here in the United States. Probably the first time I was using a product bought here locally in the United States. And after I bought that hook, I completely lost interest in carp hooks anymore. I don't look at them in the catalogs anymore. I, I don't browse the Fox catalogs, the European catalogs, the Japanese. So first I'm going to just show you the best hook and tell you why it's the best. So those of you who don't have a lot of time can just get out of this video after five minutes. And then those who want to hang out, I'll show you all of the other hooks, not all, but most of them up close. And I'll tell you why I like them and why I don't like them. Okay, so this is the best carp hook in the world. I'm not going to tease you. This is Gamakatsu G-Carp Specialist R. It actually comes in two versions. There is a red label and blue label. The red label is RX. It's supposed to be slightly thicker than the blue. For the life of me, I can't tell which is thicker. Maybe it is a little bit thicker, but to be honest with you, whichever you find on sale or cheaper, just that's the one you should buy. They, they both work just the same. Okay, here is a close-up of how they look. Okay, this is the number four actually. I think number four is the most universal number. It's good for big carp and small carp. If you're really going for only trophy carp, you can get some number twos. And if, you're, if you want to use the hook for boilies, then I recommend number six. So four is universal. Two is for big ones and six is for boilies. Okay, let's start with the reasons why this is the best carp hook in the world. Uh, number one is the shape. Uh, carp hooks for some reason come with some funny shapes, man. I'll, I'll show you some more funny shapes later, but you can even see this one here. Why is this hook shaped like this? So this, the, the gamakatsu over here, uh, on the right, they just have uh, nearly perfect, it's not absolutely perfect, but they have nearly perfect shape. Uh, in my opinion, the perfect shape of a carp hook is this Japanese hook over here. Uh, if you want to know, let me just take the gamakatsu for a second. If you want to know what is the perfect shape for a carp hook, this is it right here. It's absolutely perfect. This shape, my friends, cannot be improved. Reason number two why this is the best uh, carp hook in the world is the coating. Now coating is not very important and I don't even know how much fish, you, more fish you catch because of the coating. It just makes a difference for me. The, the carp hooks, these uh, Gamakatsu carp hooks, they have some special, they call it nano smooth coating, but it's something like a Teflon coating that creates a texture on the hook. And because of that texture, it does two things. First of all, it always keeps the, the hook clean. You know, you can have dirt, blood touch these hooks. Every time you pull them out of the water, they look exactly like you see on my hand here. They are always clean and I kind of like that. Uh, the cheaper hooks, like the ones on the left, instead of this uh, Teflon coating, have just regular paint. The problem with paint is, first of all, it's not as durable, dirt sticks to it, but also it's reflective. L look here how shiny the painted hooks are. And the Gamakatsu, the Gamakatsu hooks are not shiny. Now, I fish in mostly muddy water, so like I said, this probably doesn't make a big difference. But if you fish for carp in clear water, you don't want shiny hooks because carp is a lot more intelligent than the average American things. These shiny hooks, they will cost you a few carp if the, the water is clear. 
Number three is these hooks have an eye where you can reliably tie a knot and don't have the paranoia that your knot is going to slip. Now, Europeans and Japanese, they are smart people, okay? I'm not saying anything about their intelligence, but they're also very stubborn. Now, like I said, this is the perfect shape hook, but, you know, if you tie a knot here on this, what is it called? It's not a knot, it doesn't have a hole. If you tie a knot on to, to hold this hook with 50 pound braid, and this, uh, this braid dries, then gets wet, then dries again, eventually it will loosen up. I don't care what knot you, people are gonna tell me, oh, you should use this knot, I never had a problem. This, I don't care what knot you use, what line you use, I would always have the phobia, even if the knot never comes off, I would always have the phobia of the knot slipping. I don't know why Europeans and Japanese keep making even today these hooks without an eye on the top. Reason number four is price and availability. You can walk into a Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's and buy a pack of these for $4.25. 10 hooks for $4.25. I think that's a pretty good deal uh, for, for such an amazing hook. You don't need to order hooks from Japan and pay shipping and wait three weeks and ordering from Europe is not much better. But the reason, folks, the reason number five and the real reason why I stopped looking for other hooks is, I don't know if I can focus, the tip of the hook. Actually, to be technically correct, it's the durability of the tip of the hook. These hooks are extremely sharp out of the box, but I can say this for all hooks that you saw on my table. All of those hooks are super sharp, okay? European and Japanese hooks are always going to be super sharp out of the box. I don't want to compare which one is sharper. They're all super sharp out of the box. But this hook remains super sharp for a very long time. The tip, the very tip of the hook over here, never gets bent. I don't know how they hardened it but it never gets bent. It is so durable and stays sharp for such a long time. Let me show you some hooks here. Look at this, some European hooks. What are they? I keep forgetting. Ace, Razor Point, Stiff Rig, Trod. I mean, Ace. I mean, look at the packaging. Everything is amazing about, look at this, the shape. Look at the Teflon coating. I mean, this is a well-made hook. Everything is good, but the problem is the tip is garbage. These hooks, you catch one, two carp, and the tip always, I find it bent to the left or to the right, the very tip of the hook is bent up. And this has been a problem for me with so many hooks. I don't want to change rigs on the river. Very often I go carp fishing just for the afternoon for three, four hours. I don't want to be retying rigs. Even if I have them ready, I don't want to deal with this. And I find most of the carp hooks not having a durable tip. So this hook, the Gamakatsu, ouch, ouch, it got me right now. On top of having everything else is extremely durable. So I don't want to bother anymore. I don't want to experiment anymore. This hook is extremely sharp, extremely durable. It has the right coating, the right shape. Uh, it has the eye so you can tie a good knot on top of it. And it's cheap and available everywhere. Why should I bother with this fancy exotic stuff from Europe and Japan that costs a bunch of money and you have to ship and wait and you cannot return? Now, if anyone is still around, I'll show you some other hooks. I bought a bunch of these guys. A few years ago I bought maybe I don't know 30 or 40 packs of them. Here is the problem with this hook compared to the Gamakatsu. The, the shape is better and the hook is probably sharper. Problem number one, I, I don't trust this eye against a, you know a, a big carp. I, I don't want to be worrying during the fight is my not gonna slip or not. Problem number two, painted instead of Teflon coated and very shiny. And problem number three, believe it or not, is 
the hook is too thin wire. With most other fish this doesn't matter, but with carp I found that it matters. I, I usually like thin wire for everything, even for catfish. Give me thin wire for crappy, thin wire. I don't care that it bends. But with carp I found another problem. I found that the thin wire hook just tears a straight line into the mouth of the carp, just cuts the entire mouth of the carp and the hook just comes out because it cut the whole mouth. I think these hooks are so thin that they just tear the face of the carp and eventually the, the tear is big enough for the hook to come off. Here is the model number for this hook if you happen to think uh, this is a shape that uh, you like. This one actually has a good eye so you can tie a good knot but also very sharp but also very thin wire. It will cut the, the face of the carp. Here are some corda hooks very popular in United States actually. Well they don't sell them here but a lot of US carp anglers buy them from the UK. Uh, this is called the White Gape and White Gape X. Does this remind you of R and RX in uh, Gamakatsu? Same thing, the X is supposed to be a little bit thicker, but the difference is uh, really, really hard to tell. So what is the problem with this hook? Absolutely nothing, except... Uh, Except very suspicious. Can you tell me the difference between these two hooks? Okay, let's just look at the R and R. What is the difference between these hooks? Okay, let me show you the actual hooks in my hand. This here on the left will be the corda. And this here on the right will be the gamakatsu. What is the difference? Huh? I cannot tell the difference. This is corda crank, okay? Again, excellent hook. Everything, everything about this hook, the eye, the Teflon coating, the sharpness, the durable tip. Funny looking shape, but I kind of like the shape. The shape would be good too. But again, I, I haven't seen a Gamakatsu hook that look uh, like this, uh, but I mean, if you want to pay double the price for a hook that will be the same quality as this, but with this shape, then go ahead and buy it. Uh, it. It is a reliable hook. I like the shape of it too. But I don't think it's worth it because this shape is actually slightly better. And again, it is the same thing, only more expensive. Starbaits is actually a popular brand in Europe. Uh, these are good hooks here. They say classic boily. I don't know if I would use such a wide gap hook for boily. But it's a, it's a good shape. It has an eye, reasonably, um, reasonably durable tip. Uh, I don't like that it's painted and so, look, they're really shiny. And again, if you order them from Europe, they will cost you double what uh, the Gamakatsu will cost you. But if you like it, this is what they look like. Talking about boilies, Mad Gripper Hook, Teflon coated, number four. Mad is also a very popular brand in Europe. But as it come, uh, when it comes to boilies, I believe this here, guys, is the perfect shape for boilie hook. Let me pull one out Ooh, to show you. Europeans always have such nice packages. Japanese, not so much. Um, this, I believe, is the perfect shape for boily hook. The, the hooking mechanism when you fish with boilies is a little bit different. I believe this is the perfect shape. It has the Teflon coating. You can tell even in the video. Extremely sharp tip. I use this. The tips, man, the tips are too thin and too exposed, uh, too thin and too long and the tips will bend on these hooks. You're gonna catch one or two carp and the very tip, the tip of the tip, when you touch with your skin, you'll find it bent. 
So that's a problem that I found with a lot of these European beautiful hooks, beautiful packages, beautiful shape, Teflon coating, everything. But they are not durable and they're still so expensive. But if you want to try them, this is Mad Gripper. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple more and end this video. This is Prowess Elite Tech Carp Hook W3. Size 4, 10 pieces, Teflon coating, of course. And these hooks, I can say the exact same thing I said for the previous hook, except the, sh the shape is not that perfect, but this is also a pretty good shape for boily hook. They have to be a little bit elongated and a little bit inward. They, they shouldn't have such a wide gap. But pretty good hook, pretty good everything. The tip very thin. If, if you make the tip of the hook so thin, it will bend. So thin and so long, it, it will eventually bend out. Again, one or two fish, the tip bends out. So not as durable, but if you're interested, that's what it looks like. The last hook I'm going to show you is Nash. Nash is very... I mean, one of the best reputation brands, carp brands in the world. Very expensive stuff always. This is number two. The size is true. But look at this shape. Why no curve, man? They just straight line here, straight line here, straight line here, straight, straight line up. Other than that, the material and the tip, everything looks like a gamakatsu hook. I, I have a suspicion they... These hooks come from the same factory as these hooks. But uh, slightly, I guess, original shape. If you want this shape, this is Nash Claw, size 2. Size 4 is probably going to be better. But a lot of these European hooks come, you know, smaller. So when I order, I'm always torn, should I order 4 or 2? is a little bit big. I don't regret owning these. I'm gonna use them for big carp one day or something else and I'm sure they will hold up. But again, premium price and why when you can get this for four bucks. That's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.